Welcome back to the Professor's Lab. I'm Professor V, and this is round one of the league tournament that happened at Die Hard Games on November 9th, 2023. If you didn't know, Die Hard League happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central at Die Hard Games, featuring casual and tournament play at whatever format anyone wants, really. More info in the description, and check out Pokemon's event locator for premier events at Die Hard Games, such as League Challenges, League Cups, and pre-releases. Please hit that like button right quick, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, say what you need to say in the comments, and all that other good free stuff. But anyways, let's get into this game. Round one. Looks like the player on the right got a mulligan. And we have the light, Mew, versus Charizard on the right. On the left, starting things off, putting that Genesect V on the bench. Attaching a energy, I think, to the active Pokemon. Uh, we'll be able to tell what it is soon. Uh, Ultra Ball being played. That's the item card that lets you, that has you discard two cards and allows you to search your deck for a Pokemon card. It could be a basic. It could be a stage five. It could be a mega. Anything. Getting rid of that lost vacuum and a double turbo energy. Hmm. So this must be the um, a fusion Mew build. Uh, they usually play around three double turbo energies, so okay to get rid of. Uh, it just depends on what's in the hand. Uh, apparently the hand was wanting to be kept more than um, that double turbo energy. Oh, the Charizard player on the right forgot to set out their prize cards. Uh, so we're getting that resolved now. The players handled it um, respectfully and peacefully, uh, especially in this uh, smaller, low-level, lower-level tournament, entry-level tournament, I should say. We're all just chilling on a Thursday, playing some Pokemon. It looks like that Mew V was fetched with the Ultra Ball. That's good because it thins the hand down a bit. And this Cramomatic will be played. Cramomatic, discard an item card, then flip a coin. If heads, computer search. <laughs> search your deck for any card. And what's that card going to be? The infamous Battle VIP Pass. This item card you can only play on your first turn when you do search your deck for two basic Pokemon and put them on your bench. Another Genesect V and another Mew V will be joining the bench here. And now we are seeing this Mew deck fire on all cylinders on their turn one. Just what you like to see. Um, so yeah, we're going to use Fusion Strike system here to draw up to five cards, since there's five Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. Looking for another Fusion Strike Pokemon, another Genesect ideally, and there we go. Three Genesects on the board now. The board is nice and full. We're drawing the max cards with Fusion Strike System up to six. Fusion Strike System number two coming down here. Uh, energy was already attached, so no need to hunt for energy anymore. Um, Forest Seal Stone might be good to be looking for to prep for a future turn in case the hand is disrupted, but really don't need to play it right now. You have everything you need on the board. You also don't want to attach those tools uh, too quickly because of something like Lost Vacuum in the format. Passes things over to the player on the right. They play that battle VIP pass of their own. Gonna search the deck for two basic Pokemon to add to the bench. Depends on what's in hand, but most likely we're gonna see a Charmander, at least one. Pidgeot V is the other find there, so there is potentially already a Forest Seal Stone in hand to uh, equip that Pidgeot V with. There you go, Forest Seal Stone attached to Pidgeot. That Forest Seal Stone gives Pidgeot the Star Alchemy V-Star power ability where the deck can be searched for any one card. Not before an Iono being played here. Iono both players shuffle their hand, put them at the bottom of their deck, and then draw cards equal to their remaining prize cards. 
both players going to get six cards off the top in this instance. And the uh, Charizard player is hunting for more Charmander, more Battle VIP Pass, more Pidgey. But I'd at least like to see two Charmander and one Pidgey on the board this turn. Potentially even two Pidgey, as the Mu V Max deck can take a KO on just about anything with a powerful Fusion Strike system draw. But also not the worst thing in the world just to stand up a dark type Charizard EX against this dark weak Mew VMAX deck. The Charizard accelerates to itself so it can start attacking. And Forest Seal Stone being activated there. Start Alchemy searching for that Reverse Hollow Battle VIP Pass. That is going to find the Pidgey and the second Charmander. So it'd be very nice to have a second Pidgey at this point, but more importantly, fundamentally, multiples of your main attacker. So you can't attack if you don't have an attacker, right? Um, really not too much else needed this turn. Depends on what's in hand. If there's energy and way to find another basic, then that Mew, Mysterious Tail, could be found and uh, utilized here. But just depends on what's in hand. I uh, got the the setup going second here, so really not much else to ask for. Energy attachment per turn isn't that big of a deal since the Charizard accelerates to itself. I guess uh, it could be important if the Mew deck plays something like Path to the Peak to shut down that Charizard Infernal Rain ability. But it just depends on what's in the hand. Of course, I'm the player on the right here. I can't really remember what it was <laughs> so many games since then. Looks like nothing else to do but pass things over to our Mew player and hope they don't hurt us too badly. Second Fusion Strike energy being attached to that active Meloetta there. Excuse the glare. You guys know by now. Featherball being played to search the deck for a Pokemon with free retreat. The Mew line has free retreat, finding that Mew VMAX. Mew V on the bench evolving into Mew VMAX. Choice Belt being attached to the active Meloetta. And we're going to start drawing some cards here. Actually, not going to attach that Choice Belt to the active Meloetta. Instead, it's going to. Go going to be invested on the bench onto that Mew VMAX. Another choice belt being attached to the Genesect, just to thin cards out of the hand. Four Seal Stone going onto the other Genesect. We are being fully equipped here, two cards in hand, so Fusion Strike system to draw up to six after a shuffle here from the Featherball deck search, of course. So Meloetta for sure has the KO on uh, the opposing Manaphy. It does 70 times, Melodious Echo I think is the attack, 70 times the amount of fusion energy that's in play. And there's two fusion energies in play doing 140 damage right now. But definitely would like to see something like a boss's orders or even an escape rope to take a KO on, a, on the more important Pokemon on the opponent's bench. Ultra Ball being played here, discarding Lost Vacuum and the fourth Genesect V. Okay, discards here. To search the deck for a second Mu V Max, but more importantly to thin that hand out so that way we can use the Fusion Strike system to continue to draw cards. That's Mu V's thing. I mean, Genesect V's thing, excuse me. Mu V on the bench evolves. Genesect uses Fusion Strike system to draw more cards up to six. Did we see that boss's orders? It's the escape rope. Of course, the Charmander comes up. We've got two of those on the Charizard side. Uh, the Free Retreat Mew V Max goes into the active spot while our Mew player makes their decision on what to play next. 
always scary uh, facing down the Charizard deck as a Mew player. Just the weakness is very powerful, obviously. That four seal stone on the Genesect on the bench being activated. V star power ability star alchemy. Search the deck for a card. Consulting a discard pile to see what's the best option, and a card is grabbed. I think it was the judge. I wonder if Path to the Peak is in hand. First of all, I wonder if it's played, and second of all, if it was in hand already. Either way, the judge is coming down. Would like to see this comboed with the Path to the Peak. That definitely... Um, puts the hand in the face of this Charizard deck. But either way, Judge being played, both players shuffle the hand into their deck and then each draw four cards. Mew is okay with this because more cards can continue to be drawn with Fusion Strike system as we're seeing here, drawing up to six. Looks like there's nothing else to do this turn but attack with that Meloetta. Consulting the hand, making sure there's nothing else to play, and Melodious Echo for the knockout on that Charmander. Mew VMAX deck takes the first prize of the game. Charizard players deciding which Pokemon to promote. It depends on what's in hand. Uh, if the Pidgeot can be found, then it's Pidgey, because Pidgeot has free retreat. If the Pidgeot can be established, let's say. Um, but if we're not so sure and we can only rare candy evolve one Pokemon, it's got to be the Charmander. So that way could, Charizard could start attacking. Arvin being eyed up here as a supporter per turn. Nope, actually going to play that Luminion. Luminion, when it hits the bench, it uses its Luminous Sign ability to search the deck for a supporter card and apparently we need cards here. Professor's Research being found off of that Luminion and being played discarding a bunch of supporters. Arvin, double Arvin, double boss hitting the discard pile. I think there is one more boss in deck so not too too bad but we definitely like to have the bosses as a Charizard deck to control the board and take precise knockouts where needed. And let's get lucky off of this professor's research. It's a powerful supporter card discarding the hand and drawing seven new cards. Starting things fresh. Looking for at least rare candy Charizard here. Instead going for rare candy Pidgeot EX. Pidgeot EX has the powerful quick search ability. But it's not going to use that before a nest ball being played to search the deck for a basic Pokemon and put it onto the bench. Another Charmander will most likely be found here. In order to keep to continue streaming attackers. Pidgeot uses its quick search ability once per turn, search the deck for a card and put it into your hand. Charizard X being found off Pidgeot. Another rare candy already in hand. Rare Candy, evolving that Charmander straight into that Charizard EX. Infernal Rain, when Charizard EX evolves, search the deck for three Fire Energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Two going onto the active, one onto the bench Charmander. Let's see, we already play a supporter, so can't use the boss's orders. But going to activate Lost Vacuum. Lost Vacuum, you send a card to the Lost Zone then you may send a tool or a stadium card in play into the Lost Zone. And it looks like the Choice Belt on that Mew VMAX being sent to the Lost Zone. Heads up play, um, that Mew VMAX is going to need a lot more modifiers to be able to take a one-shot on a Charizard EX now. And nothing else to do but attack the Meloetta for knockout. 210 damage coming down onto that Meloetta. If it's weak to dark, it's times two. And play will resume on Mew's side. Mew VMAX being promoted into the active spot with its free retreat. And now things look scary. The 
the Charizard is established. Ultra Ball being played, discarding Battle VIP Pass and Switch Cart to search the deck for a Pokemon. Uh, can't search for another Genesect, so it's going to have to be another Mew V. Mew V joining the party on the bench with that breakdancing Genesect up in the top left corner there. Getting down on a Thursday. Players consulting their deck, um, seeing what else is in there, what options they have, what can they do to make a comeback. Let's see, is that a Cramomatic? We'll see if the dice is going to be grabbed here. A couple cards are played right in the glare. Maybe it's double uh, Power Tablet. I bet it's Power Tablet. Uh, power Tablet, whenever you play it, um, your fusion Pokemon do 30 more damage. So 60 more damage, as two of them look to be played here. We're going to cut the opponent's deck to control our own fate and force, not force, seal stone. Um, fusion Strike system being activated to draw up to six cards. Cramomatic being eyeballed here need to discard the least useful item in order to use it. Cramomatic flip that coin or roll that die and it is a heads. Our Mew player gets to search their deck for a card, any card. And then this coming back to me now, this had something to do with energy. It looks like double turbo energy was found there. something with energy. I should have listened to the game first to figure out what happens here. Double turbo energy being attached to the active. Forest seal stone being attached to the bench just to thin it out of the hand. Fusion strike system number two to draw up to six cards. Another cramomatic it looks like discarding that battle VIP pass and it is tails this time so nothing. Then two cards out of the hand though to draw more with Fusion Strike System. Drawing a couple more cards here with that third ability and another Cramomatic being played. Flipping another Tails, Snake Eyes. Two heads, two tails. Can't be mad about that I guess. And nothing else to do but to swing into this Charizard for a lot of damage. Uh, let's see, 190, 250, I think, damage. Either way, a two shot. Yeah, that was two power tablets. Ah, and then here's where we're calling the game. I'm not even going to think about the damage. So. There was something about the Mew player uh, is out of energy at this point. I think there's no energy in deck, and um, or you know not enough. Maybe just like a fusion energy, a single fusion energy in deck, something like that. And um, the double turbo, last double turbo, is on the active Mew. It attacks, but it doesn't take the KO on the Charizard. The Charizard will take the response KO on the Mu Max taking three prize cards, but more importantly here, taking the energy off the board, sending it to the discard pile, and it looks like there was one, maybe two uh, energy prize. So our Mu player says, hey look, this I, I can't attack anymore. You got this game. Good game. What a way to end our round one. What do you guys think of this video and the commentary? Please let me know in the comments. Like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Professor's Lab.